Okay. It's your boy Zappa, professional stage ninja, and welcome back to another genuine gunpla review. This is Plumpla. You know, reviews for plebeians, like me, straight builders. What I'm going to talk about today is the P Bandai Gundam X Ju Mao. Uh, this is a variant of the Gundam X Mao as seen in the ONA Jim's Counter Attack. Uh, on the box here, you get your standard P Bandai monochrome picture of the model kit itself doing what it do, firing all the lasers. In this kit, in this box, this very expensive and hard to find box, you get one sheet of uh, color applications, uh, decals, not decals, not color applications. They don't really do a lot of color coverage, um, mostly accents for the cameras and beam emitters, standard poly caps. And while I don't have all of them here, I I throw my runners away when I'm completely empty with them. But I'd also done that before I chose to start doing genuine reviews. So you get what is a t actual total of one, two, three, four. I believe it was seven runners, and the manual in full color because it is not just. It is a Build Fighters P Bandai, and they don't skimp on the colors. It is a unique kit that doesn't get just a slip of here's new pieces. Because Build Fighters, you know, it's all about the customizing bit. Uh, you get some sheet for effect parts, uh, a K1 and K2 that are exclusively for the Jumao itself, with uh, four colors on each runner. You get uh, two gray parts, one of them for the backpack, one of them for the softer ABS joints and hands. Both of those are for the original Gundam X. Uh, there's a blue runner for the feet and the chest, also from the original Gundam X, and another of just white body parts for stuff like the, the generic parts like the arms, the thighs, and some of the shoulder parts. And then this. This... Runner from the original Gundam X Mao is here for exactly seven pieces, three of which are for the beam saber handles. The other two are like shoulder cuffs. It's preposterous how much this is actually really wasted, but I guess because of positioning and you, they didn't want to just not give you any melee weapons with it, I get it. But you have enough parts here that you can at least build the head without the V-fin. Much of the torso, uh, a better part of the backpack for the satellite cannon wings and the joints for it. But as is your want to do with P-Bandai, you kind of waste a whole lot of plastic and you get leftover parts. There's enough parts in here that maybe, if I tried hard enough, I could get another X backpack and buy a Jim Jim and use that G-bit head. You can't see me looking off into space thinking about finally having the proper G-bit, but that is a fantasy for another day. I'm going to keep that runner. The rest I will discard, throw, tossed into the void, as you do. Uh, get this out of the way. You are also into the void. Now, before we move on to the kit itself, let's shuffle that box out of frame. Shuffle your boy over here. Talk a little bit about the manual itself. It is a four-page manual, double-sided. Uh, once you get in, you get the usual, you know, accessory construction color pages. And on this side, you get information about Mao himself. And the model itself, as well as the, you know, the build custom detail shenanigans, your, your, your color paint guide, if that's what you do, all the details about the weapons and accessories that it has, and the descriptions therein. 
Once I will read for you here now, which I don't see reviews ever do, is actually reading something from the manual because I haven't seen a review of this kit yet. What I will read is about the Gundam X Jumal itself. <coughs> and it reads, The Gundam X Mao Demon King is a customized and highly upgraded version of the Gundam X from After War Gundam X. The Jumao its fighting main tactic, disintegrating enemies from afar, is still intact, and its firepower has been maxed out to the limit. It emits beams simultaneously from all over its body and its X-shaped parts. The beams slice through any free thing, any and everything, destroying all in its path like a gigantic sword. And uh, a, a an MS. I I guess that grammatically makes sense. An MS because yeah, a mobile suit truly fit for the name Mao. And for those that aren't too well-versed in Japanese, and I'm not, but I've picked up a few things. The latter half of that, the OH, the O, is a determining term for king. And you see it a lot in Super Sentai for their combined forms, like the Gokaio, their giant, you know, Megazord, you know, fighting form. Uh, and here, the Jumao... Uh, it is the Ten Demons, and let's look at this. You see how those wings are shaped in a nice little X form? Then the next Jumao. Ju is Japanese for ten. X is Roman for ten. Ten, 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 ten. <laughs> so with the manual slid way off screen, we're going to shuffle the boy in here. Do a little zoom. And we're going to talk about the kit to the best of my dialoguing ability. Yes, check out my shirt from the Philippines. You love it. Check out my gun, my Garrett jacket. You love it too. This is Gundam swag right here, baby. Moving on. So. This is your standard high grade, and uh, let's see how well one of my biggest problems with this kit goes on. Grabbing it by the waist, pulling it off of the action base, and it still happens. This may be my personal problem, and it may be a case of the action base itself, but the action base adapter is a bit tight on both this action base and the the standard like three piece clear ones that come with a few kits it's tight on there and oddly enough the peg here that plugs into the waist itself does not like to play along and stay in where it should but let's talk about the legs while we're here what we have is a good obtuse angle for the split not a full split uh, since the legs are separated, you see that they are on a ball joint. They do not have the thigh rotation that much newer kits have, like the, the Origins Aku line. The feet get 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 some get some good bend in there, about as much as you would need to. Uh, they don't f really feel like they go side to side whatsoever. Ankle armor gets that's very rude for me. I'm I'm new to this. Can you tell? The ankle armor gets a bit of good movement in there too. Uh, the foot doesn't really doesn't really go unless you force it to go, so it's going to be flat no matter what. On the sides here, and I'll get into these these leg pieces here in a bit. The beam emitters in the open phase. I'm going to call it open, like full open. Uh, the open phase, they have a good you know range of motion of you know say a good 70 degrees or so. Ugh. I'm trying to watch myself in the camera and then look at myself play with the kit itself. And But on this side, and this could be explicitly my build, is when I go to take them off, just this side, the attachment piece likes to come off. That, that could be easily solved with glue or top coat or nail polish, whatever you like to use to fix that in there. It's not a... It's, not that dire. 
but it also it comes in two positions there's two holes here and to cut them in a resting position you will put them on the lower of the two holes the upper of the two is what you put it in for firing mode here at the waist we're gonna see how well I can do this keep my hands out of the way here at the waist uh, you get if you shuffle it down you'll get more and more rotation and it doesn't want to pop off early. Really. I believe this on the t the classic ball joint. Uh, the side skirts get a little back and forth, a little up and down. The front skirt is it, the front skirts come connected, that it's easy enough to separate them if that is your want to do. And move my way up to kit the. The X wings or the X gun, we'll call. It, I'll try to remember to call it the X gun. Has three points of joint. Uh, one here specifically at the backpack. Another one here for side rotation. Uh, if you twist and turn and pull, it's going to be really easy to pull that out. But you really shouldn't be doing that kind of pulling on it. It's more of a rotation situation. And then you get a full rotation also here you know, at, from the joint to the gun itself. There's another point of art articulation here that you don't really get a lot of, but that's going from one joint into the uh, poly cap into the backpack. So it's really kind of a four point situation, but only three of them are ever truly used. It's the same case for the two up top. You get, you know, up and over the shoulder. Uh, you get, you know, rotation at the gun itself. You get a little rotation, you know, on the on the sh on the straights, and then at the tips of each gun, you have about 45 degrees of give. Uh, if you push any more than than what is the you you'll feel the limit. If you push more than that, what you'll do is you'll start to pop off this top cover. But, it, 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 so long as you're not like going wild with it, it's easy enough to pop it right back in. I'm going to pull this out to show you that at the tip of each of these guns, there is uh, one of our decals in there for the, for the beam emitter. And on the underside of each gun, there is also a sticker for the camera itself. Uh, which one does come off of you? So give me just a moment here and pop this back on. And I will try to get the backpack out of the way. To move on to the arms themselves, you get the shoulder with a bit of forward motion. So you can actually cross the arms over the chest. Very nice. Need a little Nakamura chops in there. Uh, full 360 here. Full 360 at the at the bicep. A good 100 degree bend at the elbow. You have some bending here at the shoulder at the shoulder piece. The resting position is up and flat, whereas the firing position will be down. Uh, here at the arms, very similar to the legs, you have the cannons. Hold on, let me position these. Correctly, you have the cannons on the arms here. Uh, they are attached onto this ABS plastic. You can pull them out or slightly or completely off and rotate them back into resting position. Firing position, you'll see at the front, each one of these also has its own decal for beam emission. What doesn't have one are the very, probably difficult to see here in the picture. Uh, the hands themselves also have beam emitters molded in but they don't come with any uh, size decal for that suppose you could take some of the extra coloring from the decal sheet itself and nip that just in there and I might give that a shot later now that I think about it but maybe not as for the rest you the sticker sheet is mostly for the cameras and uh, beam emitters you get one more sticker also in here under the chest for it is a silver sticker that 
it is standard for all Gundam X, you know, kits. It's for the cockpit. You get a camera here at the front, a camera here at the back, which we will simultaneously also show off. Nope, we will simultaneously show off full head rotation here. You get some good head banging in there. Uh, I already nipped the safety flags off. There's also one more sticker here at the v crest of the V-fin itself, just the between the, the, the front camera and the V-fin, there's a gray color app there. Nothing you couldn't easily paint in. And then of course your eye sticker. And two black stickers here in the chest. Now, I'm going to put this boy back together. And as you saw me play with it before, the the standard resting position for the backpack gun, the X gun, is in the big Roman numeral X because he fit to give it to you. As for firing, you will flatten out the blue pits here on the, sh on the shoulders. For the under cannons, you will swing them under and then rotate them at the into the angle position that you like. They, once the arms are out of the way, they do swing under rather easily. Uh, on the shoulders, you will swing the shoulder cannons forward, forward for that as well. You'll want the wrist bits facing outward, the blue parts facing outward. And then once more with feeling, we get the legs out. The, ah, yes, the top ones, uh, these are a little different. You'll want to more or less get them flat. Rotate them upward, and then you can turn them around and put them at whatever angle you like. I find that just having them flat and, and turning them... Well, no, you can just go straight, turn upward, and then rotate outward to your desired angle of firing. This is going to... To me, this looks goofy. To you, this may look, you know, nice and symmetrical because I have an, a, a symmetry OCD... That's kicking in really hard right now. And then, voila! You have me being crazy about what direction all the cannons are firing. This kit comes with, precisely, four other things. It comes with a set of holding hands. This, this may not show. These are standard Gundam X hands. Nothing special about them. They hold things. That one fell off into the void. I'll pick it up later. Uh, it also comes with handles for both a standard beam saber and your typical Gundam X, like, you know, big beam saber. Large beam sword is what Super Robot Wars calls it. The large beam sword. Unfortunately, on this particular kit, there is nowhere to store either one of them. In the X and the Mal, you would clip this onto the satellite cannon, the opposite side. And on the Mal, this particular shaped beam saber goes on the opposite side. Uh, this is also on the same size one that comes with the uh, crossbone mount. The hands, like I said, these are standard Gundam X hands, so they do not have a little molded in beam emitter on these because that would be completely obstructive. With that, we're going to talk about pros and cons and then give this a number. Our number for this will be 10. 10, 10, 10, 10. But it will be a 9 out of 10. Biased opinion. Uh, there's really nothing too wrong with this. Uh, pros over here. Well, actually, no, let's zoom back out. The pros are, it's, you know, it's a very standard and very stable high-grade build fighters kit. Uh, it is, if you like anything that Mal built, if you like Gundam X, this kit's for you. Uh, it comes with what I feel is an incredible, 
in my experience, is an incredibly rare light green beam saber effect part. I don't think I have a single one of these amongst all my other kits. I think I have a dark green one, but not one of these really nice light green ones. They're super bright as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if you like big guns, it's got all the big guns. And... You know, it's, it's, it's a really stable and reliable high grade. There's nothing loose about it except for this one leg part, and I think that's personal construction. Uh, over here, our cons are, first and foremost, P. Bandai. If you ain't got free money and you ain't got free time, you know, P. Bandai. Uh, your, your price point on that, you know, it goes along with P. Bandai being its, its number one fault. Uh, for me, it's number two fault is this whole waist bit. It makes it in, like, repositioning it for my photo shoot with it was just kind of a pain in the butt because the legs kept separating every time I took it off the action base. Um, any other downsides to it? Not really a whole lot of... It, it's, it's a good, solid Gundam X kit. Very few cons, very few pros for that. So 9 out of 10 is my unofficial personal biased opinion. Uh, I thank y'all for watching, but what I want to say before we hit you with that typical Jig Geon is you can check out this review and plenty of other dozens of kits on our Facebook group, uh, Pleb Plot. It is an, while it is a closed group, you know, we approve people you know, within hours, within the day at the least, you know, depending on who's awake. Uh, it is a group for builders of absolutely any skill level because we want to encourage people to build and not have to live up to an unreasonable standard that they're not comfortable or they're not ready to get to yet. Builders of all levels are already in the group. People who have racks and racks and racks of paint to straight build champions like myself who have shells and shells and shells of adored and straight built gunpla. Secondarily, because I'm trying to move into doing reviews now and again, uh, I have linked in the description below a link to my Snups account. It is a collector's organizing website wherein I keep galleries of everything that I've built thus far and everything that's in my backlog. So if there's anything that y'all want me to do a review on, leave a comment below or otherwise hit me up on our Facebook group and I'll see what I can do about pulling something off the shelf, giving it a dust off and talking about what it do. But until then, we'll see y'all in the next Let's Play, in the next review, and in the next Colony Talks. G-G-On.